Welcome to the Theo video for Thursday, January 7th, 2016. This is Jeff White and you know, out there in the market right now, it's getting flat out ugly. It literally has the appeal of roadkill, you could say. I mean, tonight I wanna to discuss the fact that there's a few different camps in the market right now and they're very different from each other, but it's always a good exercise to consider who's involved and their possible motivations and as we make our own trading plans, just kind of consider all those things. And you know, there's a point beyond this that I'll share with you in a minute, but I really first wanna kind of walk through uh, the different camps that are involved in the market right now. There are those who are caught in this downdraft and we've been working our way lower here and we're kind of accelerating to the downside even you could say. And it's getting you know a, a little bit nasty out there here in the short term. We've created some lower highs and some lower lows. And so there are people who are getting caught in this that maybe we're thinking this is a little bit of a pullback and maybe we'd resume strength and possibly even challenge these highs here in the S&P back at 2134 from early last summer, late last spring. And all of a sudden they're starting to note that there's a, a significant change of character that has taken place. And so you could call them the stuck holders, right? They're dying for a bounce. They wish they could lighten up here in the short term and kind of feel like they're getting that second chance to reduce their exposure. And they've held on a little bit too long, maybe past their uncle point. And so the first chance that they have to sort of undo their mistake, they're gonna take it. And that's gonna lead to a little bit of overhead supply if and when a bounce kicks in. There's another camp though, and it's a smaller camp most likely, but it's the short camp, it's the bearish camp. They're loving life right now. They're off to maybe the best start of the year that they've ever had, but they're possibly getting a little bit antsy. I mean, after all, how long can we average you know, these moves to the downside in excess of 1% per day? I mean, for example, the S&P 500, we are now down to the tune of 6.4% in the last six trading days. If you go and take a look at the uh, NASDAQ, you know over that same period, just the last six sessions, we've seen the NASDAQ shed 8% in six days. And if you look at the Russell, we're off 8.2% in the last six days. We're now setting new, fresh 52-week lows in the small caps. So, I mean, it could continue a little bit longer, yes, but the traders who are sitting with that short exposure, they're enjoying this and they're wondering kind of in the back of their minds how long they wanna stick around. I mean, every morning lately has been a gift. We've had six straight downside gaps to start the trading day for six days in a row now in the NASDAQ. And so there's kind of that wondering taking place whether or not you know it's smart to remain similarly positioned because once that bounce kicks in, it could be really violent and it could be really painful to remain short to the extent that some people are. And then there's the third crowd, which really is the sidelined crowd. And in that group, there's a few different opinions. So, you know, some flat out don't care where we go next. They're just kind of a little bit indifferent to the market right now, and they're not interested. They're waiting, they're kind of holding that dry powder for, you know, a great opportunity, kind of a can't miss opportunity, and apparently this ain't it yet. So, you know, some, have a bullish opinion, some have a bearish opinion. Let's discuss each in case you find yourself among them. And you know, so if you're bullish here, let's just kind of look at the big picture here. I mean, we've been working our way lower, setting new lows. If you're bullish here, even in the short term, let's say that your time frame is just a matter of hours or days, you may want to get involved on the long side. That may be your sense that you you you're looking for a spot to get involved, but you may feel like it's a little bit early. And to an extent, you're probably right. I mean, generally, uh, when you're getting long into a sell-off, it's best to do so after the sell-off, not as the sell-off is still taking place, meaning you don't step out in front of that freight train that's headed south so rapidly. You wanna kinda wait for it to pause and uh, see some signs of strength. So, you know, generally, you wanna wait for someone else to kinda make that move and then just kind of aim to ride the wave a little bit. You don't wanna be a pioneer. Pioneers, they get shot. <laughs> so. You know, look for some stabilization, wait for the intraday charts, you know, for some indications of positive changes of character to start to emerge. You'll see that in the form of higher lows starting to form. You know, maybe you watch the futures, maybe you just watch the ETFs, whatever it happens to be. 
wait till some strength has emerged. Then you have a reason to get involved rather than just the fact that we've declined so much in such a short period of time. Because if this pace continues even for a couple of days and you're early, man, it's gonna hurt. If, however, you are bearish here and you find yourself feeling like you're missing out with a lack of bearish positions, then it's time to consider the fact that for the current move, you know, it could certainly deepen, yes, but for the current wave of this decline right here, the easy money has been made, most likely. And so knowing that, you're essentially chasing here to try and be adding some exposure here on the short side. You're dancing on the edge of that proverbial razor blade and it'll cut you pretty easily. So, you know, perhaps a, a little bit better way to view the situation is to understand that you've got a little bit of hanging around to do before you need to be clicking that sell button and before you start jumping in on the short side because you know it, it doesn't even have to be dead time though i mean it should still be spent building a little bit of a sell list for yourself that you can more aggressively attack once a short-term bounce has arrived and then stalled out or maybe run its course basically you want to aim to get involved on the next decline and that means waiting for some sort of a short-term reset to happen first maybe it's a bounce maybe we fill a couple of these unfilled gaps here for example, on the NASDAQ, some kind of backing and filling. Backing meaning we're working our way back up, filling some of these unfilled gaps, these voids that you see here on these daily charts. So a little backing and filling would provide that reset and then open the door for a potential second move to the downside where you could get much more involved. And you know, I mean, look, there's a lot of stocks with bearish appearances out there to, you know, keep on your radar, uh, which really haven't even fully broken down yet. I mean, these may be some go-to names for you. You may find some others, but you know, there are stocks like Tesla, which is in this rising channel pattern here. And at some point, if it cracks the lower end of this, which it's flirting with now, but if it does start to get through that area with a little bit of force, you know, maybe undercutting the 213 area, uh, then you've got perhaps a little bit better opportunity to play another move lower in Tesla, similar to perhaps what we saw prior to this little rising channel. Uh, there are other stocks. There are Decker's Outdoors. You know, here's a stock in a prolonged downtrend, and yet it's moved laterally here for a number of weeks. It's flirting with key support here. If it undercuts that 45 zone, maybe it's starting a new leg to the downside. KMI, lots of energy names are pretty ugly. This one certainly is among them. A little low level base here that price may be trying to break down from here. So it hasn't broken down yet. That's kind of similar to lots of these names. Uh, Taser, this is another one which is you know kind of near its lows but hasn't yet broken down from its short term base. So you can keep stocks like this on your radar. Uh, Apple, maybe you, maybe you play for some kind of a bounce back. And let me zoom back out a little bit here. We had seen Apple uh, meet some key resistance here back uh, in late 2014. And uh, you know that's really around the what 103 area here. Uh, and now we've kind of just undercut that here in the last few sessions. If we were able to see some kind of a bounce back toward that area, then perhaps you can play a short against that level. And uh, But first we need some kind of a rebound back to it if you wanna play that type of a move. Uh, maybe Facebook, I mean, this is another one that on a bounce back, toward this 9,900 area that it just undercut here, that may provide a really nice opportunity to get short against this zone right here. But for now it's undercutting it and it's really kind of a chase at this point. So, you know, the bottom line here is that trading really comes down to timing. And if you're early or you're late, you're wrong. So no matter what your directional bias is, consider waiting for the right conditions to emerge before you take that action of buying or shorting, whatever it happens to be, all right? Thanks everyone for stopping by Theo Trade. We'll see you soon in the Theo chat.